What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Uh, I'm going to do a couple back-to-back -back videos so I can get some content up there for you guys. Uh, a big topic that I keep seeing, this bow is a little aggressive so I'm trying not to get bit, but it's a pretty snake. Um, so a big, big topic I keep seeing on Facebook and Facebook groups is feeding intervals and how often should I feed various stages of the life of the boa. So I have a boa constrictor behind me. This guy right here I've had since I was a little kid and I've you know, I've had a lot of really old snakes in here. I have some that are 20 plus, some that are approaching it, um, quite a few in that range. So it wasn't until recently where I started seeing a lot of controversial or, or um, not controversial, but, but um, I guess different feeding methods that um, I see really getting pumped and pushed on Facebook. And they're backed by science, so I can't say that they're wrong. Um, I can't say that what I'm doing is right or wrong either. It's just worked for me. Uh, what I have isn't backed by any type of science, it's just backed by what I've experienced and things that I've done throughout the years. So as babies, you know, they just come out of the snake. I like to feed them every seven days a really small meal, uh, something that, you know, a baby, a baby boa could probably take a hopper or a um, hopper mouse. So I might feed them fuzzies and I'll feed them every seven days till they get about four to eight meals in them. Once they're born, their digestive systems, they need time to develop, and they're still developing until they're about six months old. So you really got to be careful on the meal size. Um, meal size is what's going to really make a difference with your snakes. And um, that's why not so much the frequency, but frequency and the duration between feedings is going to make a big difference on whether you have an obese snake or a very healthy snake. So I picked this guy because I just opened up his drawer. He's a pretty snake, but you can see he's got a really nice shape to him. Um, he's got kind of a square or rectangular body, and uh, he's not fat. He's he's very active, very healthy snake. So I thought he was a good example to use. Um, as a baby, again, going to feed something smaller. I don't weigh my meals out. I see people asking, what about, you know, should I feed 10% of the snake's body weight? I haven't weighed a snake or a meal, I don't think, ever. So um, I can't help you on how much these things are weighing. I just judge it by the eye size. I like to feed males that are a little bit smaller, if not equal to the diameter of the snake. I don't want to leave a big lump, if any lump at all, when you're feeding at this duration. If you're leaving a lump, if you're feeding big males, then this isn't a method that you want to use because you are going to end up with a fat and obese snake. So as babies, right out of the mother, let's say zero to six months, I feed every seven days something that's a little bit smaller than the biggest diameter. From six months to a year or so, I feed something that every seven days, that's about the same diameter of the snake. And then after a year old, I'll still keep them on seven to 14 days, depending on how they're looking. You really have to use your eyes and just judge. If the snake is looking good and healthy, I'll keep them on the seven day schedule. That means they're growing. That means they're using all this food. And, uh, and I'll just continue that till they hit about two or three years. Once they're about two years old, I'll bump them to every two weeks. Um, Something, again, something that's about the same size as the snake's girth, so it doesn't really leave a lump in it. I could feed this snake today, and you wouldn't know that it had something in it in a couple hours. So that's, that's the meal size that I'm shooting for at this, at this feeding frequency. Um, I've noticed they do a lot better on this than giving them one giant meal and then letting them go months at a time without feeding. Um, once they're three or four years old, I'll keep my females feeding on a 14-day frequency because I'm going to have them breeding. I'll bump my males to every three weeks, and uh, I'll just kind of continue that for, their, for the duration of their life. Obviously, if, if there's some snakes that are getting a little heavy, uh, I'm going to cut back on their feeding. I might feed them monthly. I might decrease the prey size. Uh, so these are things all of my adult boas are, are feeding on kind of an extra large rat, or up, up to, if you were judging by a rodent pro size, uh, I guess I think they call them triple XL, but that's for some really big boas. So a snake like this, he'd be on maybe a large rat and he would get fed every three weeks. Um, maybe every two weeks if I was going into the breeding season. So feeding for breeding and feeding for just maintaining snakes are a little bit different. If you're gonna feed to breed them, I like to feed my males a little bit heavy going into the breeding season. I'll feed them, so let's say my breeding season starts in September, October, start in the beginning of the summertime, I'll start feeding them every two weeks. I'll keep my females, I'll start feeding them every two weeks, but I'll bump up their prey size just a little bit. Because I want them to put on that weight. They won't feed as readily while they're breeding. Some of them are great. Some of them will feed awesome all throughout. Other times they'll just kind of 
go miss miss males the males would be pretty interested and occupied in breeding so i don't want to i don't want to risk them getting too skinny because the males can they will literally breed themselves to death if they're super interested they're not going to focus on food they're going to focus on just continuing breeding and uh, that can happen has happened to me and I learned my, my lesson from that. So this is why I do the things I do. I'm not trying to hide things that I've screwed up. I've made a lot of mistakes. And that's why I'm telling you guys this because I don't want you to make the same mistakes. And I see a lot of the information floating around on Facebook and social media as I've done that before, I've made that mistake. And if you're gonna try breeding or if you're gonna try maintaining these snakes for a long period of the time, in 10 years or so, it may come back and kick you in the ass. In the middle of your breeding season, or at the end of your breeding season, it may come back and kick you in the ass. So I'm hoping you guys listen to this and uh, this is helpful for you guys. I guess with that said, um, feeding prey, different types of prey. Uh, I use all different stuff. I use rats, mice, guinea pigs. I don't really like using rabbits or chicks and chickens. They can get hooked on rabbits, chicks and chickens and it's very, very difficult to get them off. If you have a great supply, if you breed them yourself, by all means, go for it. But uh, again, just it's the prey size to the frequency that you really want to pay attention to. So I hope this video helped you guys. Um, take a look at this snake. This is a body weight that you're going to want to try to shoot for. A nice square body, a rectangular body, very muscular and uh, really pretty snake. So again, hope this helped you guys. Please keep continuing to subscribe. Um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, everything's Jason's Exotic Reptiles .com. Um, And yeah, we'll keep them coming. Give me more topics. I'll keep talking about them. Thanks, guys.